When you use Skype for a business meeting, we have an ability to have multiple participants. We can invite more people, and you can also look for different participant actions. There are conversations that can be had, for instant messaging, and notice here we even have some controls. So in this particular column, we have all three of them muted so that we don't have the interference of the noise. We have an ability here to see who's got video, and of course, whose desktop is actually being shared. So all of these controls are available to us to run this business meeting. Here, we have a Microsoft Word document being shared so that we have an ability to share it, have a conversation about it, and collaboratively work on what needs to be done. Down here at the bottom of the controls, we can add elements to this particular meeting, like have videos so that each one of these participants we can actually see their video. And if they happen to be the one speaking, they can be the one that's the larger headshot per se. Meetings can either be impromptu or scheduled. So if you want to do a impromptu meeting, it literally is as easy as opening up the Skype app, clicking on the meeting tab, and simply hitting meet now and inviting your participants. So we can do it that way, or if you're in a conversation already, you can invite others to join the meeting. Or if you happen to be in Skype for Business, notice you can say start a conference call and it's going to ask which type and you can pick Skype call. The conversation window appears, the contacts are already invited to join, and you continue forward. If you happen to be using Microsoft Office installed on a local PC, from Outlook 13 and up, meaning Outlook 2013, 2016, or of course the apps that we have on the web access, depending on how your setup and your hardware is, um, we can create a meeting invitation for a specific date and time, and then we can send that link to the meeting attendees. If you wish to create a Skype meeting and you happen to be in Microsoft Outlook, it's as easy as going to the Outlook calendar, I created a brand new meeting or a brand new appointment. I can use a scheduling assistant to schedule a meeting with everyone there, or I can create that Skype meeting. So I'm creating a Skype meeting. Now I can join a Skype meeting. And what happens is you put who it's going to. You've got your subject. You've got your location if it's needed. And then we've got our, our start time, our end time, et cetera. What everyone gets once you click on create Skype meeting is an email and this is the actual body of the email. So I clicked around a little bit to get the screen right so that you could see that they literally just get a hyperlink. When they click, it'll bring them to everything that they need. Once they follow that, you'll see we get to make a decision based on audio. So they've clicked on join Skype meeting once they receive this email. And on audio, we can use Skype for business, audio and video experience, or we can have them call. You've got to have a little bit of background set up for this one, or you may not want audio at all. Now, when I say a little bit of background, your company, the IT department, has to have set up some sort of audio-based service, and here it's got to be a configurable how that's going to happen. If you're looking to join a meeting, it could be as simple as someone's done a meet now and sent it to you, which basically looks like an instant message. They're calling me and they just have to simply hit accept. Of course, if I don't want to participate, we can hit ignore. And here we've got our options on how we want that meeting to happen from our side. So if they've used Skype for Business, that's what it's going to look like. But as I've shown before, if they send it via an email message, this is the body of the message, and they simply have to click on the link. When you're in a meeting, a meeting can be quite simple or quite complex. So here we have a lot of different meetings, controls, and options, like whether or not we want them on mute. Um, with the participant actions, do we want to have instant messaging on or off? Do we want video on or off? How are we going to handle the names? Do people want to be hidden so that they don't know who's in the meeting? Or is everyone in attendance? So we have a lot of different participant actions that we can pay attention to. And we have even more options like recording the entire meeting so that we can produce it and share it later on. How to manage the recording. If we're allowing instant message, how large do you want the text to be? So there's a lot of nice controls and options to get the meeting to run exactly the way you want it to. 
Just to keep the controls and options organized, understand when it comes to participants, we can hide their names or invite them by email. We've got a lot of options for the recordings, the display size, the font, how they're going to or what kind of information they'll get upon meeting entry. And of course, help if you need it. And these are the presentation options. If you're the presenter, your notes to manage the content, manage the attachment, manage the notes that you're presenting to everyone. We also have a whiteboard. So a whiteboard is exactly what it implies, as if you were sitting in a physical office and someone gave you a dry erase pen. We have an ability to whiteboard, add shapes, add elements very similar to OneNote. You can take your mouse and you can draw freehand content. You can connect the dots if that's what you want to do. It's just like any other whiteboard, only in this case it's part of the meeting and everyone can see it. And here you've got your whiteboard controls, which is everything from um, the color that we're using, the thickness of the pen, whether or not you want a highlighter, do we want to erase content, are we approving content? So that all just takes playing around a little bit and getting it to happen. When you're done with the whiteboard, notice you also have an ability to stop presenting it and to take it away. Under more options, you will see here again some options for uh, whiteboarding, like deleting all the annotations. So if any, someone is writing all over it the way I do these slides, you might want to get rid of them and clean up the mess that's left behind. You can also save them so you have a permanent file and you can also send them to your notebook if you so please. Polls are fantastic. So as you have your online meeting, in this case we have three participants, we can create a poll on the fly. It brings up a little dialogue where you put in your questions. In this case, we've said, what brainstorm idea do you like best? That's the title. And then, as the person running the meeting, we've said, airline discounts, packaged and organized trips, hotel and dining recommendations, foreign language assistance, and I don't want to vote. And as people are clicking on each one of these, it will tell you live where all of their answers are going. So if I was to click right now here, you would see potentially 33% do not want to vote, maybe 66% like airline discounts. So it's going to, in, in real time, show you on that bar exactly what's going on. And of course, when you're done, you can stop presenting your poll. Q&A, again, it's an, a way to have a question and to do some answers. So student two has asked the question, when would the promotion go into effect? Student one has answered third quarter of this year. We do have some user options, general, personal, contacts list, status, my picture, phones, alerts, they're all in there. Um, this is just a basic description so you have them nice and organized. Um, this is log files if you're having issues, do Microsoft get them? Login settings, your contacts lists, what your status is going to be, whether or not you want your picture shown, the phone numbers associated with your account, and any alerts that you want, like if a contact happens to appear and log on, do you want to be alerted? We also have options for instant message, ringtone sounds. Um, again, when someone's calling, what do you want it to sound like? Um, audio and video, which devices you're going to use. An example, I've got a number of them that I use depending on what I'm trying to record or broadcast. Whether or not you want to save, and if you are going to save, what location is that file going to be in? where you're going to save your recordings, and what to show when you join the meeting, what version of Skype will be required, and if there are any default devices that are needed. Your administrator has some settings as well. Now the administrator might be you, it might be someone else, but as the administrator you get to choose organization-wide settings for Skype for Business. One of them right here is our presence privacy mode. Do you want to use presence? Automatically display it or display it only to users' contacts. So you're not going to see if I'm available unless you're one of my contacts. We also have mobile phone notifications. So in example, if I was to send Lisa something in the office and she was offline, how do I want to handle that? And what happens is I'm notified and it gets sent an email. So you've got some mobile phone notifications as well so that you can be alerted for incoming messages. Now here we also have external communications. External communications is whether or not your administrator will let you Skype 
outside of your organization. So it's whether or not I can just Skype within people I work with, or can I send a Skype meeting to one of the customers and meet with them that way. That has to be made on external communications. Anytime you need help for Skype, you just simply go into help. Here you can type in any subject that you wish to search for. And as I always like to tell people, you're not the first person to use Skype and you're not the first person to ask that question. So if you feel like it might be a common question, like how do I send an instant message? Uh, what's the quick start? How do I add a contact? Those are pretty basic things that everyone needs to know. You're gonna find them right here on the initial screen. So just use the scroll bar and move up and down in the help menus and you'll be able to find some content to help you along. If you wish to create a new meeting in Outlook, all you have to do is click on new meeting with the focus on the calendar. This is going to be a standard meeting and the standard meeting belongs to Outlook and Outlook calendars. Now what I want to point out, which is why I've positioned the new meeting dialog box where I have, is we have new appointment, new meeting, new miscellaneous item, and notice new Skype meeting is right there as well. But if you use the new appointment or new meeting buttons, as I usually do, and then realize you want to change or convert it to a Skype meeting, all you have to do is click on it. So this is to show you that the button is in both locations. Start the meeting that way, or start creating the meeting and then convert it this way. So in example, I'm going to go ahead and email and we'll go ahead and give it a subject. And we're going to put what the subject of the training is, when it's going to be. So all I have to do to convert it is to click on Skype meeting and you'll see that the same message that I was working on just simply gets converted. And what happens and what that little delay was that we have joined Skype meeting right here to say that it's an online meeting for Skype for Business, et cetera, et cetera. But notice this is just standard text, so you can add your own text here. And that's just to show you're not stuck with all of it, but you do want to make sure that this particular piece is still there because this is where your hyperlink exists. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send. And off it goes. It really is that easy to get it done. So if I was to look on my calendar for Friday, which is busy enough, we might be able to see that the meeting has been cons configured and then whether or not she's accepted that Skype meeting. So you'll see here, there's the day, yes, the mother's on the cruise, we have a couple different appointments, and then you'll see IP office training right here. When I give it a click, it will tell me a little bit about the meeting, and when she accepts the meeting, I'll be able to find that by double-clicking and looking into the meeting details. In this demonstration, we're going to control some meeting options. We're currently in a meeting between Diane and Molly. And in this meeting, they're already seeing a desktop. So Molly has a chance to share with Diane a desktop that's available in the background. We have multiple monitors here, so we're not necessarily seeing it on this screen. When you have a meeting and you want to deal with some meeting controls, we have here something called More Options. Under More Options, we have an ability to manage recordings, meaning record the entire session. We can also look at the instant message text display size. So if it's too small or too large, we can change the font. We can make our meeting high priority with the notes. And notice here we even have meeting entry info, which is the conference ID, the number that they can call, the meeting link. So let's say someone wants a link to join the meeting, we can go ahead and copy and paste this and send it along. We also have an ability to look at the Skype meeting options. So when you look at the options, you will see under conversation and for the presenter how things are handled. So these people don't have to wait in the lobby. Well, the lobby is if someone's trying to join the meeting and let's say I'm not there as the presenter. So we can decide who that can be. Who's the presenter? We can make those decisions as well. 
who can annotate the PowerPoint presentations. While I would assume presenters only, you wouldn't necessarily want everyone writing on the slides. But you can make that choice depending on the content of the meeting and the people who are in it. We'll see here who can look at the content on their own once again, presenters only, everyone, or simply no one. So we have a lot of different options for the meetings that we can use to set up the content and what's actually going to be shared.